What is America's first freedom? What is the first liberty that is listed in the First Amendment to the Constitution? If you ask the average American today, they might say, what is the First Amendment? But they might list freedom of speech, freedom of the press, but the first freedom listed is religious freedom. It is a core freedom, often leading to the other freedoms. Constitutional attorney and author Jenna Ellis and founding president of Providence Forum, Dr. Peter Lilbeck, explain. The Founders' idea for religion in the public square was so that we could advance our triad of first freedoms, which is freedom of speech, freedom of association, and free exercise of religion. Why are these so important? Because if we are going to learn the truth about God and the truth of who we are as human beings made in the image of God, we have to be able to exercise those first freedoms. We have to be able to speak freely. We have to be able to speak freely with each other. And we also have to be able to speak freely about God and His truth. So the founders understood within the context of our very First Amendment to make sure to preserve the idea of free exchange of this understanding of who God is and to make sure that we can freely debate within our public sphere. What is truth? Who is God? And be able to freely exercise our religion and talk to each other about our sincerely held religious beliefs and also exercise them in the context of our personal and our public lives. God is not absent in the Declaration. He's there four times. In the Constitution, he's not absent. He's incarnate. He becomes part of its structure. His teaching becomes part of its molding. And then at the very end, as they concluded, they said, in the year of our Lord, 1787. So the, the commitment, if you will, is to see the Christian faith in its basic outline woven into a frame of government consistent with what they founded. And of course, it had no attempt to overthrow the established churches of the individual states. That will not happen for many years in different cases. They wanted to give freedom for conscience. So all of this then says, what does that First Amendment mean when it is the amendment to the Constitution? Basically, what it tells us is that Congress is to make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Uh, Philip Schaff, the great Christian historian, said this is the first time in the history of Western civilization where the government denies itself to have any right to speak into the religious life of its country. It says we have no right to make any laws respecting religion. We leave it to the states, to the individual conscience. And we will not prohibit the freedom of each individual to exercise their religion. So that's the balance. Now, Washington clearly said, I would never have signed my name to the Constitution if there was any thought that they would take away the rights of conscience. He believed in the First Amendment. There are many historical examples that show that the founders of America did not intend for God to be banished from the public arena. Here's just one example. The first Congress were the very men who gave us the First Amendment, which today is sometimes twisted to mean there shall be this strict separation of church and state by which they really mean the separation of God and state. Well, before giving us the First Amendment, that first Congress wrote to President George Washington and said, now that we have been able to create our own governing document in peace and safety, why not declare a national day of thanksgiving to Almighty God? Washington agreed and wrote up a beautiful proclamation of our first thanksgiving. Indeed, America, as founded, is one nation under God. For Providence Forum, I'm Jerry Newcomb.